Uh, the idea that there is no longer a need for the temple because our bodies are now God's temple. We both know that our bodies in no way take the place of the temple, the building, or the structure. The scripture stating that our bodies are the temple of God must be a figure of speech. But what would be a good way to explain this to someone? My personal belief is that, yes, the spirit indwells us, but there is a need for and there will be a final temple, a building, or a structure during Yeshua's thousand-year reign. And after the thousand year, years are up, somehow we transition from this temporal world to a new eternal world, the world to come, where Yeshua is the eternal temple. Any insights would be much appreciated. So I agree. So interestingly, I'm, I'm going through Acts right now. I'm writing on Acts. Um, and it's interesting to me that even after the Shavuot experience, right? The Pentecost experience in Acts 2. That whole thing, Luke wraps up that whole story with, they were continuing every day, you know, and they're in the temple every day, right? It's 246, Acts 246. He talks about the temple and how the believers were uh, in the temple every day. And then end scene, and he starts Acts 3 with Peter and John going up to the temple at the ninth hour. Right, verse one of three. Well, the ninth hour is three p.m. and it's the it's the the afternoon sacrifice. They're going up to participate in the afternoon sacrifice at the temple. But just before this, Peter has given this wonderful exposition, and he does it again in three. Right, he's got these two speeches back to back, and they they have similarities in both of them. He's he's speaking to uh, people who seem to be native-born Israelites living in and around Judea, and he calls them men of Israel, right? And it's it's obviously the specific group. He accuses both the groups of handing Yeshua over to the authorities and crucifying the Lord, right? His theology is certainly on point. He uses he uses the prophecies of Joel and David in, in Acts 2 to, uh, to show that Yeshua is, in fact, the Messiah. So his theology is on point. Why, if his theology is so on point, is Peter continuing to go and participate in, sacri in the sacrificial system? Certainly he knows that the Holy Spirit indwells. He was there at Pentecost and became indwelled with the Holy Spirit himself. Right? And he's the one who defends it to everyone. So uh, I think there's a lot of ways to look at this. But my personal, the, the way that I personally handle this is to simply, because everyone's going to, most uh, modern Christians today are going to turn to Hebrews, right? It's not that these, this is just a shadow and certain things are passing away, so on and so forth. But even with this being the case, there's still a need for the earthly temple, even if it's just temporal cleanliness, in other words, the picture and the shadow that's here on earth is that God will dwell with his people. But we have to be cleansed from death in order to be able to, you know, in other words, we have to be released from death to even enter that space. That picture still applies here today. In other words, obviously, we the, the cleanliness is, is kind of a moot point at this, at this juncture in time because there is no temple. But if the temple were built again and sacrifices were done again, there would be space that would be clean and space that would be unclean. And the way that we would, we would have to follow the rules to become clean in the eyes of God to be able to enter into that temporal space that is clean. So just for that reason alone, there still is a, a need for the temple. There's still a need for ritual purity within the temporal world. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button and check out more videos from Messiah Matters.